Good evening. Tonight, I would like to talk to you about the Thunderbird. The Thunderbird is a cryptozoological species not identified by science like we like to talk about here all the time. It's reported to be a very large bird, huge bird of a raptor-like or sometimes a buzzard-like proportions. And, um, people also seem to be reporting something more along the lines of a pterodactyl as well. You get sporadic reports of these. Uh, I know a lot of reports come out of Alaska, which if you're going to be an incredibly large bird species that uh, was trying to hide out and make a living, Alaska would be a very good choice because they have a lot of backwoods and uncharted areas, although it does get very cold there. So we look at the Native American cultures. They have a deep history of the Thunderbird. I know especially in the, the Pacific Northwest, a lot of their tribes have uh, Native tr traditions of Thunderbirds and other uh, type cryptids and other type spirit animals that are related to the Thunderbird, giant wing bird type species. Um, I know in the Southwest they have them too. A lot of tribes have them, and I know outside of the U.S., uh, all over the world, a lot of native traditions do talk of some kind of a giant bird-like species, either in a god as a spirit animal or as in a real creature. And uh, you, you got to remember that a lot of the native tribes also believe in Bigfoot, and they also, you know, think of mountain lions and cougars and uh, a lot of badgers and a lot of other animals as spirits animals as well. So scientifically, uh, what you see in the background is a recreation of the magnificent Argentine bird lived around 6 million years ago on the plains of Argentina. Its wingspan was around 21 feet. That's a big bird. Its feathers were as long as samurai swords. That's pretty incredible. Now, for me, that's a pretty good representation of about how birds get because you have to understand, like, humans can only get so big before we have a lot of joint issues. Our frames, the way we're built, can only support so much. And it's the same thing with birds, especially if they're a flighted bird. You can only get so much because weight is the enemy. So let's take a look at a couple bird species out there that are very large. And uh, I'm not saying that these bird species are necessarily what's causing these sightings, but I just think it's a good representation of what's going on. So here we have the wandering albatross. And it was one of the largest wingspans I could find um, for a bird. And I think I remember seeing a documentary about them. And they're really huge um, as far as a bird goes. They got about 12-foot wingspan, which is very large. And uh, they're known for flying basically across oceans. That's why they're called the wandering albatross, like through hundreds and hundreds of miles of open water. And uh, they take off, and then they don't set down for months at a time. It's pretty fascinating the way that they can just keep flying. As far as the heaviest birds, I found the Cory Buster. Now, I think I remember seeing these at the San Diego Zoo, and they're, they're a big bird, about 45 pounds. That's the size of a medium dog, and uh, it's very large, especially for a flighted bird. Uh, so you think, especially how they're built with their neck and their legs, that these guys are actually pretty good flyers from what I understand, but this is about as heaviest as a bird can get and still be able to take flight. Because, uh, you know, when you start increasing the size on things, even by a couple inches, the weight goes up exponentially. Now, some people describe the Thunderbird as being more buzzard-like, with kind of a bald head, almost being like a large vulture-like creature seen flying abound. And I don't know if that's just misidentifications, because I've seen vultures and buzzards. They get really huge. And if they're flying low and they're at the right angle, they can cast a large shadow. Um... Also, there are ones that are described as being more hawk or raptor-like or eagle-like, um, being big enough to carry off full-grown people. And uh, there are reports of even, you know, golden eagles and bigger eagles even carrying off small children. So I could see how this could come up through history, and uh, there could be reports of it. Uh, especially if you take something like that big, big bird that we saw there from six million years ago, and think, well, maybe, you know, they died out a couple hundred thousand years ago when some early man ancestors were around, and maybe pockets of them survived up until very recently. So the other thing that really gets me about this whole thing is some people describe pterodactyls, like a pterosaur, a winged dinosaur, a winged serpent, something that doesn't have feathers, but has that smooth, lizard-like, straight out of Jurassic Park, like what you would see in the movies, uh, which I find very fascinating. To me, I think this is something else entirely. Now, I know if you look at cryptid reports in South America and in certain parts, people still claim to see dinosaurs of these days, or they find in fresh mud, they find footprints uh, of dinosaurs as well. And it's one of those cryptozoological things where in different parts of the arid deserts and parts of the world, they find 
they still report seeing dinosaurs, which always really fascinated me. Because you could make a claim for Sasquatch as an undiscovered species being a forest ninja. You could make a claim for maybe a giant hawk or buzzard or bird-like species that's, um, you know, staying hidden deep dark in the woods way back in there, being some, being, you know, some last holdouts or carryover. But 65 to, you know, 70 to 80 million years ago, that's a pretty hard one to justify by any normal scientific means of how people are seeing a pterodactyl-like beast. Now, by the way, the photos in the background, I make no claims to their authenticity. It's just stuff I found on the internet. Like most things, this is just a representation. Some people uh, go a little far and go, fake, fake, fake. It's like, well, yeah, I know. I make no claims to these photos. I think they're actually pretty cool photos, whoever came up with them. Um, and it's pretty interesting. I know there are reports from the Old West, and uh, especially down here in the Southwest of miners and prospectors coming across uh large pterodactyl-like animals. Um, pretty fascinating. So where the dinosaur-type ones are coming from, uh, maybe there's some kind of uh, residual-type thing going on, like with hauntings that have like a residual thing, or there's some kind of uh, dimensional crossover or portal, or we're seeing something that's maybe not really there, but it's manifesting itself. I have no idea. So anyway, this is just what I wanted to pass along to the Thunderbirds. There uh, seems to be a more natural type that looks like a big bird. Some look like a buzzard. Some look like a raptor. And then there seems to be the more dinosaur type. Anyway, stay safe out there, folks. And um, if you feel I deserve it, please give this video a thumbs up. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you very much.